hello guys welcome to my youtube channel hope you have watched my first video on r vectors today i'm going to start this video through learning functions of r and please subscribe my channel for more videos like this okay let's move on to today's video functions of r can be thought of as verbs they are the best way that we can get r to perform with our data first i'm going to introduce the syntax for using a function in r that was already created by someone else then i'm gonna over the formal definition of a function and i'll be creating my own function to perform custom actions i'll use an analogy to a simple sentence in english to understand the syntax to run a basic function in r here i'm going to take the function name as a verb arguments as the object of the sentence a given function can also take arguments that are analogous to adverbs. So now I'm going to use the sentence. He reads the letter patiently. Now I'm converting this sentence in R syntax. In this analogy, my function is called reads. It is the verb describing what he wants to do. It's helpful when our function names indicate clearly what they do. The first argument for the function reads is letter, which is the object. For many R functions, one of the arguments will be the data the function will act upon. Further, the argument called how is mentioned as being patiently. Arguments often have a control vocabulary for an example how argument can be defined as either patiently or impatiently in other cases an argument can be used as a number such as a parameter value i suggest you to check our documentation to understand the available arguments for a particular function first of all i'll have a look at the documentation for the function class it's a simple function with just one argument called x the function class needs to act upon an R object. So you can input any R object into class function to find out what type of object it is. It's always important to know what type of data we are working with in case of data reassignment to a different data type for downstream analysis. If you use arguments in order, you don't have to type the name of the argument. However, I suggest to type the name of the argument in the case of a more complex function that uses a lot of arguments to make sure there are no errors relating to the order of the function. In the first example, I just gave the R object. I want to check. In this case, the function takes only one argument. The second example also generates the same results, which means there is no problem with the first example if we are specifying arguments in the correct order. Now we are going to look at the documentation for the function rnorm with more optional arguments. If you just type the function name, you will get the script for the function rather than the help. So you need the question mark prior to the function name. Then I'm going to generate 10 numbers randomly and assign the results to a vector called random numbers A. Right, now let's make a simple plot using numbers vector and random numbers A vector with the function plot. Okay, finally I'm going to build a simple function and here I'm going to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. So this is a super simple example. But you can make really complex functions and they can have a whole series of different actions like some calculations, plots, charts and do all that instead of one function. But just to get started, I'm going to talk about a simple function here. So I start off with the function name. I'm going to call this as Celsius to Fahrenheit. Then the assignment symbol and I'm going to type in function. So function is actually a function used to create other functions. Then I put a parenthesis and put in my attributes. So anything that you would like to feed into the function. 
Here I'm going to have one argument that goes in. So I'm using Celsius as the input parameter. Then I put a curly bracket and click enter. Then it will automatically move the other curly bracket down and give me extra space to type what I want the function to do. So let's call this as f. Now we perform the conversion using this calculation. After that assignment, I want to return the calculated value as the output. Then I define input temperature and finally call the function to convert temperatures in Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay, that's the end of today's video on R functions. So guys, hope you've learned something from today's video. Please share your comments, questions and suggestions below. Also, don't forget to like my videos subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever i upload new videos like this thank you